So welcome back. I've got a couple of little bits to say following the end of my video last week, which was the Imlek video, yeah, my run at Imlek. Um, first of all, I've today had a email from Bristol, from their Imlek team. They've, for the first time to me, admitted that there was a problem um, this was an email that went out to all of the competitors uh, and it stated that there were problems throughout the day Saturday, it got progressively worse through the day and the issue was they hadn't um, anticipated the load cell not being watertight. Um, at the end of the day Saturday they ended up cancelling a couple of runs uh, and they made the... they changed the load cell overnight, recalibrated it all, and we're ready to go Sunday. But due to the number of runs affected on Saturday, they feel that they should void the competition. So, as of today, the competition was void. Uh, secondly, um, oh, before I move on, I should say congratulations to Bristol. Um, no one likes these things happening. No one plans for things to go wrong. We all do our very best to ensure the competition runs smoothly, the, the event goes well. My only issue on the day was the way it was handled when it was going wrong. Um, being told I was just being a sore loser because I didn't get the result I wanted. Um, the fact that the person that I was closely comparing to, we we were first and second on the board at the time. Yes, he'd done 10% more distance than me. Probably not even that, because I think we were one lap difference and I did about 12, I think, and he did 13 or I did 13, he did 14. I forget the exact numbers, but he did one more than me. And over that sort of difference, if you said it was 10% and he burnt 10% more coal than me. So that should put us even. On, on efficiency, if we were pulling the same amount of load, I had 60% more passengers and 20% more trolleys. So the numbers didn't add up to me. That's where I, that's why I was so adamant that there was an issue. They've now admitted the issue. Well done, Bristol. Um, restored my faith in you all. I thought it was just being brushed under the carpet. That's the way it seemed at the time. Um, but yes, well done. So. On to what we're doing now. Um, I mentioned at the end of the video that about paint for the pom-pom. I have ordered Craftsmaster paint. It's turned up, it's on the bench out on the other side. But before I get onto that, I'm going to have a quick look at my Ginty. Let's uh, have a better look. So I mentioned in a previous video that the pressure gauge was wrong. Um, I bought a new gauge took it to the club, calibrated it, it was all good, and we uh, steamed the engine up, and it responded exactly the same as the injector, the, the pressure gauge, which I thought was wrong. So the safety valves were lifting at 50 pounds. Uh, we screwed them down as much as we could at the time, which they do look a bit nicer actually, there's not as much thread sticking out the top. Screwed them down, um, got the Safety I was lifting somewhere near the line, they're still a little bit light, but for the moment I'm not too worried because my injectors have stopped working at high pressure now. Or say stopped working at high pressure, they were never working at high pressure before, I just didn't know it. So I'm going to try to resolve this issue. Uh, so where to start? They're both acting the same. Um, so there's got to be commonality between the two. So I will investigate pipe work, but the pipe work looks fairly smooth. That one, yeah, I quite like all that pipe work. Well, I don't like it, but it's about as good as I could get in the space. But the place I'm going to focus my attention to begin with is the clacks. So the clacks we've got are this and the one on this side. Uh, as it happens, these were Don Young's design. I took them from a, oh, the drawings for Jersey Lily, I believe. Um, one of the guys in our club, 
lent me the drawings and I just copied that piece and made them. So I'm going to take the caps off and I'm going to measure the lift that the ball's got. So I'll take the cap off, measure from the top to the ball, measure from the underside of the cap to the end of the thread, and we'll see how much lift the ball's got. It's not going to be easy to measure in there, but we'll find a way. Um, I have been reliably informed it should be about half the ball diameter. I can't remember what the diameter of the ball is. But first things first, we'll get the cap off, we'll measure down to the ball, then we'll look at getting the ball out uh, and measure the ball and see what the difference is. So, let's go. So, silly of me, before I went to look at um, measuring the depth of the ball, top of the ball, I thought, well, first of all, I will see if I can get the ball out. And I couldn't. I tried putting a bit of pipe down the hole and all sorts, and um, sort of sucking it out. Couldn't do it, couldn't, couldn't get the ball out. So what I, then I thought, oh, sod it, I'll just measure the, um, the lift. So the way I've come up with doing that is I've just got a 2BA bolt with a nut, put it on the top, I screw the bolt down until it touches the ball. Now I did that in the one that I opened up and it doesn't feel like there's a ball in there. It's not possible. I had a look and there wasn't a ball in there. I had to dig around. Somehow, in trying to get the ball out and not getting the ball out, I did get the ball out and lost it. So I've just been hunting around the workshop, hunting around the engine, and I've been hunting in some drawers and I've found a new ball. So we're back to stage one. Let's have a look. So, with the bolt nut, it's a very difficult one-handed. So that can screw down until it touches the top of the clack, like that. And that is therefore the distance between the top of the clack and the top of the ball. Out of interest, we look at the other side. That's a little bit different, so we'll have to do them independently. So, from there, what I will do is measure that. And if I zero it, and then measure, obviously I'll do this a bit more accurately with two hands, but we've got about 80 thou of lift. So I'll do the same on the other side. In fact, I'll measure this one just in case they're different. Roughly. No, they look about the same. So, I just need to find out what that one is. And then think accordingly. On my drawing, I've got the right size ball with a 3 64th lift. Now, 3 64th is only about 45 thou, 47 thou, and I've got 80 odd. So, I'm up 80, so I've got twice as much, so I would assume that the other side that's got less lift because the ball is higher is fine as well. So I also thought I would take a look at the water valves. Um, disconnected the water pipe below, disconnected the nut that secures it in place, pulled it up and it's just pushed onto a rubber pipe inside the cab. So I'll take off the gland and check that because it's feeling a bit looser than it used to. So uh, I believe the gland in there was an o-ring but we'll take a look and see what it's like. Well there we go, here's an o-ring. Uh, I will replace it, I might just add a second one, um, because the nut 
the gland was tight, so I don't know if it was actually gripping it. And I might just open that hole out a little bit and give it a bit more flow. We'll do that, put it back together, see what happens. There we go, hole opened out slightly, slight chamfer on there. Uh, second O-ring put on, put it back together, tighten the nut up, bolt up, gland up, and put it all back together. So the pie box is all a bit tricky and you can't really get to the bottom uh, pipe nut on the injector. So what I'm going to do, I've already done it on the other side because of an issue I had. So when I put it back together, the bottom came out of that nut. So rather than making a whole new piece of pipe, I split the pipe at the bottom made remade this piece and I've got a small rubber jumper in between. So I'm going to do the same on the other side which gives me a bit of flexibility in the future because if I still have trouble I can just disconnect that pipe put a rubber pipe onto there and then uh, try, the try the injector from a different water source and just rule out the water supply altogether. So there we are all reassembled and while I was at it, I've shortened the spring on the reverser there because that has always been a pain, not been strong enough. So I've shortened it so that it's got more strength to it. So now we're ready to go. That, that pipe did get shortened or split and a rubber pipe put between. Um, yeah. Let's load it in the car and see what happens tomorrow. So as you can see, I'm down at the club. I've lit the fire, I'm in steam. Let's see if they work. Pressure's up. Steam on. That's feeding. So maybe. And the other side. So there we go, maybe it was just air coming in through the water valves. That could well be the problem. Let's go and have a play. It was a, a busy day at the club and I didn't get much video of the running and showing it working. It was still a little bit temperamental at the top pressure. I might try giving them a better clean and some better and some acid this time. Uh, but it was an improvement. Uh, so, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you next time with the one I've just recorded.